Hello. Hello, how are you? Not bad. Oh, I got it. Oh. One minute, let me mute that. Hold on a sec. Yeah, how have you been doing? Good. It's been a wild, uh, like, 24 hours. <laughs> Sorry, I'm... This is the worst time to have... This is literally the worst time to ever have technical issues. Um, but I'm roughing it. I'm gonna get this to work. Were you trending before I woke up? Because I woke up and there, you were trending with like 17,000 tweets. Um, I don't know. It was the same thing. Like I woke up uh, around 1 p.m. and I was trending. So I don't know when that took place. I think like I'm all over Reddit constantly. So I think maybe it had something to do with Reddit. I think people are just really surprised by this. I mean, like I was. I thought this was a bit at first. I is it? I mean, no and yes, right? Like so I was confused. Okay, so let's mm. start at the very at the very beginning. There was this meme going around which I wasn't sure if it was true or not or like a news story, I guess, mm -hmm. where a trans um woman was claiming to freeze ketchup packs to then insert and fake having a, uh, or pretend to have like a period or whatever. And I was like, is this real? Cause I had no idea. Um, and then people were saying that that's just bullshit or whatever. That's just a meme. Right. And I see a couple days later, um, a company put tampons in a men's bathroom. And there was a little note there saying that they're going to put them in women's and men's bathroom. And, I was like, well, what the, f what, why does a trans woman who do who doesn't have periods need a tampon? Like I, it, it was confusing to me. Right. But then right. I deleted the tweet because I didn't, you know, I started thinking about it. I was like, wait, trans men still have periods. And so I started getting shit for that. And I responded like, fuck off. I'm learning. Cause I was, and it just, it went nuts. It went viral. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's really cool. As you don't see a lot of people changing their minds on this topic, but obviously there's a lot of fake news that goes around about this. Like, I don't know if you remember, there was a thing like months back, maybe a year ago, about um, a student who, who was using a litter box in school and this like made the round in the media. And it turns out it was just, it was completely fake. It never actually happened. Yeah. They, yeah. The actual reason was way more sad. They had like litter boxes in classrooms as part of like a kit for things that they might need in case there's a shooting and they can't leave, leave the classroom. Well, there's a lot of like nonstop lies and manipulation about so much, so many different people and uh, topics to push an agenda. Like, you know, there really is a culture war 24 um, seven. I would challenge that you know, I haven't really changed my mind. Why, why have I been labeled a, a transphobic person? Why, where does that come from? What's the, what's the basis of that? Like one of our earliest interactions was you intentionally misgendering me, if I remember correctly. And we were in a, so. what was the actual interaction? I remember the back oh. and forth. But so you, you tweeted out something along the lines that somebody released your dead name. And I asked you, what is a dead name? Because I didn't know. I think this is I a different. Know. I feel like this one was a different situation. But I didn't oh. like bring, you know, I don't have like a folder of receipts. I didn't have want to have this conversation to like fucking grill you or anything. I mostly just wanted to figure out where you were coming from because people are really shocked at this turnaround. I don't think it's a turnaround. I don't. You know, I don't really think it's uh there's a turnaround. I mean, I wish like chat and all these people that are saying that I'm transphobic could produce something that shows that I'm transphobic. I know I've had my issues with pronouns in the past and I've spoke out about pronouns and how fucking confusing and, you know, um, 
when you start having like all these different uh z z zems like dude i get lost in the sauce i'm 40 years old like this is like seems silly to me right does that make me transphobic does that mean like i hate trans people no no i mean i don't think that means that you would hate trans people but i think like you know i've been out as trans for 12 years and i don't i actually don't i think i've come across one person in those 12 years who use like z zem pronouns you know yeah. it, i think there's just this tendency on social media to really amplify it and make it seem like it's a much bigger thing than it is yeah uh chat why are we giving this well-known lying asshole a platform and it's like that's what i'm talking about just the non-stop like fucking what am i lying about please produce evidence but it's a lot of just saying shit it's a lot of false allegations non-stop with no receipts to back it up um i don't think many people know this but uh it should be known the the individual that runs Dromler, that is the head of my company, which I'm, I guess, most known for on the Internet, um, is trans. Um, she's been with me for seven years. Um, it's like my company is 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 ran by a trans individual. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm confused on why I've been labeled as this transphobic person that has a change like, you know. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I remember having an issue with was like the Leah. Okay, there were a few fights, but I don't remember a lot of them. But one thing that really sticks out in my mind was uh, the stuff with Leah Thomas. Like, because um, I don't think that trans women should be excluded from women's sports for a variety of reasons. Um, like the first one being like, there really isn't a lot of hard evidence that trans women are like biologically at a significant advantage to cis women. In fact, the only trans woman to ever compete in the Olympics got her fucking ass kicked. Um, well, I think it's, you know, th the problem with a topic like that is blanket statements, right? Because mm -hmm. it's got to be on a case to case um, basis. The argument that I hear Joe Rogan make a lot is um, in reference to MMA, right? You uh, send someone in there to fight um, that's a trans woman um, against a biological woman. And, you know, his argument is you just have an advantage. You absolutely have an advantage. Now, again, probably on a case by case basis, um, but the blanket statements, um, I, I just don't, I don't feel apply to uh, actual truth. Yeah. I think the problem is too is, like so much of this discussion is wrapped up in a culture war so the people who are against trans women in sports a lot of them have an ideological motivation for doing so and they don't actually even care if there is or isn't a biological advantage um for them it's like they do not want trans women to be in women's spaces whatsoever they're in like they're essentially arguing for a form of segregation I think what people are afraid of is um, somebody taking advantage of uh, your community, right? Let's say you have some like sex pest or some creep, uh, you know, wants to gawk at women and is pretending to be trans just to go into the woman's bathroom or a changing room at a gym or something to gawk at women. Yeah, I haven't actually seen any cases reported like that. I feel like the types of people who would do that stuff wouldn't go through that kind of effort in the first place. I don't have it available now, but there's a video that I just saw yesterday um, where a woman is at the gym complaining that a man is, you know, looking at her in the gym, uh, excuse me, in the changing room naked. And she yeah. called the cops. The cops get there and the cops say, well, this is a tricky, like, social issue. Um, and really nothing was done. Okay. I mean, even if we have like one random example of this happening, I feel like you could say the same thing about literally any community of people. I mean, the majority of like the majority of the times that these kind of situations happen, it's not going to be trans people. It's like going to be 99.9% .9 not trans people. 
they're gonna do this shit regardless i think and it's just follow, yeah yeah and to follow up your point i mean there are bad actors in every single community and then that community gets labeled as supporting you know the bad actors thoughts opinions actions etc cetera, etc cetera. no yeah I, I mean i do hate that like i hate um the idea that i need to change how i act because um there are outliers who make people look at the outliers and they're like this is what represents your entire community and then they expect me to change or like to call out my community constantly when the vast majority of us are not sex pests or rapists or anything like that we just want to live our lives right um however i i do i mean the internet always uh gets a fat w so after my first tweet they took this um video that i made that was pure satire um that i'm using pronouns now and i said at the end of it my pronouns are like win or some shit uh they edited it to make it seem like i had a change of heart and like the trans community like blew this edited video up to make me like this trans icon all over reddit and all over twitter and shit like that is just funny so once that popped off um, I went along with the meme and put out that Hogwarts, uh, legacy tweet, but it was like, I mean, obviously I'm trolling, right? Obviously. I'm, oh yeah. I'm I saw the Ukrainian flag and I'm like, there's no way you're not fucking trolling, but I still thought yeah, it was a good tweet. Of course. Um, I just, I think my biggest issue is being labeled, um, you know, all these fucking things when it just based on what? You know, I don't like being on any team. I really don't. I don't like um, being on a political team. Um, I feel like herd mentality um, has like stolen the individual um, thoughts of so many individuals online um, that, you know, you just can't be on a team. You can't, you can never really be on a team and be free in my opinion. It's a hard balancing act, you know, because community is really important. But at the same time, you can never really count on a community to have your back. Right. Well, do you find that in your community um, that in some ways you're a leader, but in, just like interviewing me, you got a ton of hate, right? Oh, yeah. No, people were calling me out and saying all sorts of nasty shit, but I'm also used to that. I'm sure you're used to that kind of shit too. Oh, all the time, all the time. Um, but I think the troll in both of us makes us kind of invincible where others, um, are not, you know, a lot of other YouTubers, TikTokers, whatever. It's like, they're trying to, uh, <laughs> like one up the, uh, the crowd on the wokeness scale. Yeah, I don't know. I never asked to be a leader. They kind of put me in this position. They treat me like I'm one just because I have a bigger platform than a lot of other trans people. When really, I'm a, I'm a fucking Twitch streamer, dude. Well, you had, you had wild success shutting down that website, right? I mean, that was, that's a, like, that, that's a really, really big deal. And I know you've been criticized a lot for it, for taking it too far. Um, but ever since that happened, you've been seen as a leader in this space. It was insane. Like the website still goes up and down periodically. You know, they're constantly jumping host to host, provider to provider. But the fact I took on like this $16 billion company and got them to drop a website after they said explicitly, we're not going to do that. I'm, that's one of my proudest moments. Right. What happened with, uh, the lawsuit and you know the police and all that uh i think i seen somewhere that it all oh. got dropped oh no uh so actually um i just got an email from my lawyer today um the draft of um the human rights complaint that i'm sending in interesting so everyone's been swatted i've been swatted so many times I, my family's been swatted um Pretty much my whole career. The first time I was swatted was in 2010. And they shut down my entire little town that I lived in at the time. Um, 
I've never been able to uh, get any justice um, in that aspect at all. And the police, the FBI, have never been able to find these people. Um, I did have good luck with a lot of police departments where they'll just call me now when they get a swatting as opposed to breaking down my door. Um, what, I guess what my question is, is mm -hmm. what do you hope is the result of, uh, of you going that route? I mostly want more clarifications, like from, like, I want more clarifications from them around what happened so people can stop spreading misinformation. Um, I want to make sure that these kind of situations don't happen again to other people. Because that was fucking terrifying. You know, people die from this shit. Right. I covered it. I interviewed um, a swatter, and part of my interview um, aided the police in finding um, the individual that did it. Um, but two guys were, two teens were playing Call of Duty. The bet was for one single dollar. Um, they were doing esports and and they were playing against each other. And there was an argument at the end of it. And one threatened to swat the other. And the person that was threatened said, go ahead, swat me and gave him a fake address. The one teen took the fake address, went to a known swatter in the community and said, go ahead and, and swat this guy for me, please. So he swats that address. Cops come. Mm -hmm. it's no, it, they go to an address where nobody's involved at all. And um, an uh, innocent individual came out with like a bat or something. Police shot and killed him. And it, it was just absolutely devastating. So I interviewed the swatter, which mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that he would come on and talk. And uh, that's, because of my interview. Yeah, that's uh, fucked. Like, did he just like. How did he hide his identity well enough that you could like confirm who he was without him getting arrested? So his name was Swattastic and he was a known swatter. And what I didn't know is he was actually caught once before, um, but released from prison early for good behavior or some shit. Um, so when I interviewed him, the police were able to uh, identify him by his voice and they went and arrested him like right after my interview, like within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy had no remorse whatsoever. He blamed everything on the cops. It, it was a wild, wild case. But after he got arrested, um, he got hit with 20 years. Okay, that's based. That's, that's fucking awesome. I'm, I'm really happy that something comes out of that where people get punished for that shit. Yeah, they covered my interview. This is going all the way back to, I want to say, 2016 or 2015. They covered my interview with that swatter um, in a Netflix series. Uh, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but it was wild. Um, I did want to ask, because like you said the Hogwarts legacy thing was a bit... Do you actually... What is your actual position on Hogwarts legacy? Because I see people going back and forth about it. So I here's the thing. I know little about um, what J.K. Rowling has done and said that would be considered transphobic or whatever. Um, I really don't know much about it. Um, I just know the trans community has been at her ass for like, <laughs> for like years now. Um, and I seen, obviously I'm really in tuned into the gaming community. Um, I seen a lot of people, you know, talking about how they're mm -hmm. going to buy extra copies. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a great troll. I'm going to fuck with all these people <laughs> oh my God. that, uh, that are tripling down on, you know, people like the quartering who are planning to buy 50, uh, copies. Oh my God. I hate this culture war shit. Like, you know, reg yeah. like get rid of all the trans arguments about Hogwarts legacy. Being a Harry Potter fan in 2023 is more cringe than being a brony in 2023. Just like fucking <laughs> cut it out. It's just, I knew uh, firing out that tweet would, um, you know, piss off the, the quartering types and whatnot. And it was such an obvious troll. I mean, you recognized it right away. Oh, that, yeah. You know, it was a bit. And you have like the quartering falling for it and people like that. And it's just, it, it's hilarious. <laughs> it is really funny how easy it is to get him to have a meltdown on Twitter and then delete all his tweets. It's like he does that every week. 
Dude, I called him out on Twitter and um, a lot of people from, I guess, your community yeah. or whatnot were like, oh, he's having to change a heart. He's going after the quartering. I've always hated the quartering. Go, go search. I think it's Twitter because page. you're calling him out over trans stuff now. You, you know, you just hated him before because he was a piece of shit in other ways. Yeah. And it was like, well, well the- you were doing like, you know, saying you're learning and you're changing your mind. And then the Hogwarts legacy tweet that, that you do like right after that. Yeah, I I gotta well, say I was like fucking howling. Like I was like I was just on my couch and I was like, okay, I, I'm gonna send Keemstar a co-tweet that just says trans rights. And <laughs> holy shit, every like I think thousands of people's brains just fucking exploded. It was incredibly funny. I responded to that in under a minute. Like I'm sitting there watching YouTube, um, in my living room, just chilling, watching TV, YouTube on TV. And I see like this DM of an invite. I open it up. I'm like, yes, <laughs> like, and I knew, um, I knew that that would pop off the way it did. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm not a transphobic person, but also I, I know very little, like when it comes to trans issues, mm-hmm. I'm constantly hitting up the head of Dromler who is trans Gino and asking questions. Um, because I don't know, like, you know, I, I just I mean, don't know. That's honestly, that's good. Like, I'm glad, like when you're confused about something, you're actually reaching out to trans people. Cause there's so much misinformation out there that it's actually hard sometimes to know what's true. I fall for fake news all the time and only realize afterwards. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, with the Hogwarts legacy thing, like the crux of the reason that people don't want you to buy it is basically like over the last several years, JK Rowling has been supporting um, like anti-trans organizations that are pushing bills that make it harder to transition or bills that make it illegal to like go into a woman's washroom if you're a trans woman, um, th- th- that kind of shit. And yeah. because she owns the intellectual properties of Harry Potter, she makes money off royalties. And they want people to send a message by not buying it. I wasn't going to buy it either way because I think Harry Potter is just really cringe. But that's why people are having this back and forth. Well, I think um, if people really want to boycott this game, but they do want to play the game, there's a way to do it. It's simple. Go buy a physical copy at GameStop. Someone else has already bought it. They've sold it to um, GameStop. You then buy the physical copy. Um, and it's like, it, 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 the, the company is not making any extra money on you buying that used physical copy. I have another solution, but I don't want to get banned on Twitch. So yeah, I'm just going to think- put on my game getter. Yeah, but the the people saying that um, are really risking um, they're risking getting in trouble because I would imagine with this much hype that the company is going to crack down on the people that um, are doing that. Um, sorry, I had a I accidentally hit the fucking um, I hit the wire on my mic again, and oh my god, what a fucking nightmare! Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think more the Hogwarts legacy thing is about sending a message than it is about actually making a dent in um, uh, J.K. Rowling's income. Like, uh, she's going to be a rich old white woman no matter what. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's not much you can do. But I can tell you this, J.K. won't be rolling in my money. That's so true, Keem. (laughs) <laughs> that's 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 such a good line <laughs> people love the puns i hit jeremy <laughs> with another pun today i i was trying to convince jeremy to come on my stream to make up with um to make up with ian miles chong yeah yeah was, okay i i feel like i have like the ceo of drama on the stream right now so i can like tell you some uh, so like several months ago, like when I was still like having those initial like spats with uh, Jeremy, 
I messaged Ian Miles Chong and I was like, hey, I fucking hate you, but I know you also don't like Jeremy. We should work together on this. And he's just like giving me all this like embarrassing shit that Jeremy has done over the years. And then I find out like, you know, they, they obviously have a spat and I wanted to get them on the stream together so I could play Imagine by John Lennon and sort this whole thing out. I don't, I don't think, think it's going to happen. I don't think Jeremy has any friends, but um, before, before I talk about that, I don't know about uh, Miles Chong or whatever his name is, um, because that guy, because you're against swatting, right? That guy yeah, of played course. a part in swatting uh, Andy Worski. What? So, so Miles Chong or whatever his name is, he still has me blocked on Twitter because I keep bringing this up. Him and Andy Worski, I believe, had some type of gaming news channel together that they co-owned. Um, and then they got into a feud and apparently, uh, Andy Worski was doing drugs at the time, like, you know, narcotics, et cetera. And he confessed his drug use to, to miles, uh, when they were working together and they were close and friends and what, et cetera, et cetera. And when they broke up and when they had that spat, miles called the Toronto police to, uh, to go investigate Andy's home and look for these drugs and basically swat at him. Oh my God. Um, so what a piece of shit. Yeah. And I, I actually broke that story because this is not really up for debate on what took place. Miles was bragging to one of these, um, e-girls that he was talking to online that he did this to Andy and she recorded him and sent me the audio and I tweeted it out. There's this viral uh, tweet somewhere on my Twitter a couple of years ago um, of the actual audio of uh, Miles admitting that he did this to Andy. Um, that, that, oh, I fucking, I, I don't know. Like after going through that, it just like fucking pisses me off. Like I, I can't name a more terrifying experience than just getting ambushed with guns. That's yeah. I mean, if you want to know anything about anyone, I'm an encyclopedia. <laughs> That'd be because I didn't, I don't know any like before 2020. I was not very online. Like obviously, I use the internet, but I didn't know fucking anyone in any of these spaces. Right. So it's been like a slow process of learning who everyone is and figuring out like the backstory behind everyone. And it's, there's so many fucking characters in this like insane little online world. Yeah. Someone in the chat asked me what it's like to be a meme. It's awesome. <laughs> it, it really is though. Wait, it is really Twitch chat is. still being mean to you? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, okay. I don't even have Twitch chat open. I'll be honest. Um, I'm surprised you didn't know about Jeremy getting hit by a guy in a dress. Um, oh yeah. Wait, what's Turkey Tom's deal? Um, Turkey Tom was a, a, like a little kid YouTuber, um, that was like obsessed with the commentary community, um, who... That that guy really like loves loves YouTube and has really studied it and grind it and grind it and grind it. Um, but he's always been a little piece of shit when he was a kid. As an adult, he's gotten way way more better. Um, but I know he did make a video on you, but I didn't I didn't watch it. Yeah, he was trying to, and then like I reacted to it, and he went live and reacted to my reaction, and then um, we were gonna talk, and I decided, you know what, I don't think there's. I don't think this is a good idea because I saw his YouTube chat and it was full of people dead naming me. And it's like, you know, it doesn't bother me that much, except that it's, it's fucking lazy. You know, there are so many more creative ways to roast me or call me a piece of shit. You don't have to be transphobic in order to roast me. Yeah, I agree. No, I mean, yeah, I deal with that. I, I 
people have the same like uh, go tos when they try to roast me. They call me like racist, which you know I called Alex the N word on blog TV with my hands up like over a decade ago. Um, what else do they say? Uh, they bring up the Attica thing all the time and miscategorize that whole situation. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of it, but I, I don't even know like the whole thing. I don't even know like the whole situation because I wasn't around. Right. There was this um, very entertaining um, streamer uh, known as Etika, who was a big fanboy of like Nintendo. Um, high energy, extremely high energy, and very, very like crazy entertainment, loud. Um, just a great guy. Um, and he reacted to drum alerts all the time. Like he would watch, uh, my show on stream. He was a big show or a fan of my, uh, my show. And he was very edgy and would often say a lot of edgy stuff. And, um, he started tweeting out some edgy stuff. Um, I believe he got banned on Twitter, but then he got unbanned. Uh, at some point he uploaded like porn to his YouTube channel, got it taken down. Um, oh God, he was acting, he was acting out and he was in his apartment and the stream swatted him, broke down the door, um, and took him away and took him to like a, a mental facility, if you will, because they were saying that he was crazy and all this, all this nonsense. And they released him the same day. So. I talk to him as soon as he gets out. He's like, dude, I'm trending. I'm this, I'm that. You know, he's talking about his career and, you know, how stuff has been blowing up for him because of this incident of him being swatted and whatnot. And the community was like kind of right down the middle at the time. Some people thought he was having a mental health crisis. Other people thought he was doing this for clout. Mm -hmm. and, and I was in the clout category because I was, you know, privilege to be able to talk to him directly, right? And he's talking about his career to me. I do this interview with him and right out the gate talking about I think devil. I, yeah, I think yeah. I saw clips, weren't you? like it did seem like in these clips you were kind of encouraging him to like say insane shit because you thought it was funny. Well it was. It was until until it wasn't, unfortunately. Um <laughs> So he's saying crazy stuff and he's talking about um, simulation theory and, you know, how life is a video game and all that. And I was telling him, I'm like, you can't believe that. You can't believe that in, in simulation theory, like at heart, you can't believe that because then there's no point of living. You know, if this is just a video game and none of this is real and there's yeah, no point. Of I mean, that's he's obviously like just like you know, going through it, like very obviously having a manic episode. In retrospect, yes. Uh, but at the time, no. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I, we do that interview and um, he has a couple other outbursts or whatever. Um, sometimes yeah. he's more calm. Other times he's like, you know, outlandish and then like i think it was like two months later um he passed away and everyone blames me um online uh, well not everyone but i mean uh, it it looked really bad it looked it looked really fucking bad when he was obviously really mentally ill yeah but it's obvious after retrospect all right so when i did the interview i think it was like six weeks um went by um before he um before he took his own life mm -hmm. i wasn't getting canceled there wasn't like i can't believe you you know interviewed him i, I can't believe you did like i there was none of that online it wasn't until he passed away where people started creating this uh, uh narrative and the people that say that it it's obviously he obviously was having like a mental breakdown. He was obviously manic. He was obvious. The people are saying that never watched Etika. They're, they're never fans of Etika. If you watched Etika's streams, um, right at all, him being an entertainer and him having these, uh, manic 
episodes or whatever were very similar. And that's why it wasn't recognized. Right. And it, this is one of these situations, right, where it's like, I wasn't around. I don't know much about it. Like, I saw some clips. Um, but it's like, it feels like I'm walking in a minefield here. <laughs> it's fucking tragic yeah. what happened to him, though. I'm like... <sighs> I... That hurts. That that scenario. Um, yeah. You know, the, the people blaming me or whatever, like, obviously, I'm, I'm made of stone, right? I've been on the internet forever. Um, just losing him uh, was really, really hard to, hard to deal with. Very hard. <sighs> yeah, I don't know how you, like, go on after, like, an incident that fucking insane. It was his mom that helped me out the most. His mom, his girlfriend, his friends, uh, they all reached out to me, you know, said, you're not to blame, da 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 Attica loved you. Uh, it, it was really uh, the people closest to him in his life uh, that, and do, I had this like, I had this horrible dilemma because after he passed, I felt like I needed to take the video down, but also I needed to keep the video. I like, I didn't know what to do because Etika was mm -hmm. so proud of being on Dromler and having that interview. And that meant everything to him. He, oh, he, it, the whole situation was very, very difficult and, and, and hard. Yeah. I, I can't, imagine going through something like that but i don't really have a lot of input to give because like i wasn't there i haven't looked into it too heavily so yeah yeah i don't know where to go from there because yeah uh, i haven't um yeah, I don't know how we got, like, from this point, actually. Um, I, I was actually going to look something up, because I, I was wondering. Because, like, earlier you were saying you didn't understand, like, um, if you've said anything transphobic. And I actually wanted to... I want to look. I want to see. Like, what were some of the things that people were calling you out on? I don't know. That's why I'm asking for people to, like come up with receipts or something yeah i'm look i'm doing it now i'm doing a i'm doing a search i'm looking i want to see i want to see the things because i remember getting mad at you over the um the leah thomas stuff yeah i remember that yeah i felt like she had an advantage but you can't pr like you can't prove that that's just based on like, that's based on how you feel rather than anything that's actually been measured. Well, the way I remember it, she didn't um, rank that high versus men and then versus women, um, she's winning. Well, how can you tell, like, how do you tell the difference, right? Cause it's like, if she's, if she's a, it's a double bind. If she's a good swimmer and she wins, she has an advantage. If she's a bad swimmer, people are still going to say that she shouldn't compete, as what happened with the Olympic weightlifter who didn't even w get, like, fifth place. Do you think, um, do you think, uh, I don't, forgive me, again, I don't know the correct terms, but, like, do you think cis, is, maybe that's the right term, cis men and cis women should compete in the same category? I think it depends on the sport. Like obviously, um, hormones plays a really big part. That's why the re that's why the requirements um, for trans women to compete in the female category is to be on um, hormone replacement therapy. I think for a number of years. I think it's like three years, but I actually don't know. Yeah. I mean, in some sports, it, there has to be an advantage. There has to be an advantage. 
Like I keep going back to MMA because that one um, makes the most sense. Um, somebody that's a biological male who's uh, now a trans woman uh, fighting um, an MMA against another female. I mean, I don't know how anyone can think that that is fair. Do you think that's fair in that um, scenario? I mean, yeah. Like if they've been on hormones for... If they've been on Jesus fucking stupid ass Mike. I gotta fix this. But um what I was saying, like I think it's fair. If they've been on hormones for a number of years, their muscle mass is gonna be significantly decreased. They lose some bone density. Like I would really like to see like extended studies on this. Cause like if there was actually evidence, if there was like thorough studies on the difference between trans women athletes and cis women athletes, and they found that in every fucking case trans women had an advantage i would concede but i haven't seen that like all the yeah, studies but, that i've seen it's like they really don't but you're making the argument before we actually have clarity right there's no rule set saying um or maybe maybe there is and i just don't know there's no rule set that i know of um that you have to be on these hormones for x amount of years you know before you can compete in a, a female sport like people are just making blanket statements. I can find this actually. Um, Somebody in the chat said there is, and then it's two years. So maybe they're right. Like yeah, said, like I'm, I'm, like I'm pretty sure. Like, okay, um, this is six years ago. I could probably find something like newer. Um, the. IOC rules transgender athletes can take part in the Olympics without surgery, but they must undergo hormone therapy. Like it is a requirement that you undergo hormone therapy in order to compete. I was watching um, a, or listening to a Radio Lab podcast once, and there were a couple biological females um, that were not allowed to compete, and I think the Olympics because their testosterone levels were too high or something yeah uh, no i saw that too and that's like one of the problems with how strict this stuff is is that even people who aren't trans get affected by it right. like i like because of all the bathroom panic i've watched uh videos where pe women who aren't trans are getting like harassed in public bathrooms being told that they're a man and they need to leave yeah that's i don't know it's it's a very complicated situation um and you know i think a lot of the internet the woke crowd um attacks without understanding and the people against those people attack without uh trying to understand and it's a constant battle where i don't think people are listening to each other and i don't think people are having uh conversations I think it's a lot of like yelling and screaming and, and trying to cancel the opposing team. I mean, I, th I, I mean, I said it earlier in the conversation, like the culture because of like, um, that everything is wrapped up in a culture war. It isn't rational. You know, the people who are against trans women just existing in women's spaces they're fucking feral, you know? It does not matter how much research or stats or anything you put in front of them. It's based on their feelings. You can't convince someone if it's based on feelings. It's not rational whatsoever. On the other hand, a lot of trans people are fighting every day for their own survival, you know? They're on edge. They see this shit and it, like, really pisses them off. And some of them get scared. Some of them freak out. But you can't blame them for that. What I find interesting as the the core um the core of the the argument um seems to be the same in many such situations, right? So if you're looking at uh a child who's uh starting hormone therapy, right? The trans community um for the most part supports that. Um because they're looking for the safety and the well-being of the child. The people against that are against that, against uh, doing hormone therapy as a child because they're looking for the best interest 
of the child and the safety of the child. It comes from the same place. You know, I, I can agree to that. Like, it does come from the same place, but I do think it's misguided. I don't really have an opinion on it because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I see arguments on both sides, kind of like the gun issue. I don't have an opinion on the gun issue uh, because I see both sides. Both make very good arguments. I mean, for like, for me personally, like I started my medical transition while I was still a minor, you know, like I was 16 years old and I, I used to like facilitate a youth group for trans kids, you know, like I met a lot of kids who were like 10, 11, 12. And the changes that you see in their lives, like after they were allowed to just be themselves, it is fucking huge, you know, like a lot of them ended up going from like these really like isolated, depressed kids to actually being happy, being sociable. Um, it, it's kind of crazy. It's hard to even like explain unless you uh, see that uh, change in person. And isn't I know the that argument, isn't the argument against that though, that, you know, some have regretted doing that. Yeah. It's weird. Cause it's like, there are obviously detransitioners. A lot of the ones you see on social media seem to be people who are doing it because they realize, you know, you can actually make money out of doing it. But I've met people who legitimately have detransitioned and they're like, you know, they're like the 0.1% of the 0.1%, you know, but obviously I don't think it's fair to shame them. Like if they go through it and they're, they find they're no longer happy with it, they should have all the resources they need in order to go on with their life. But I feel like putting a lot more stigma around like exploring gender and stuff is only going to hurt both trans people and people who aren't trans and detransitioners. What do you think about um, trans issues uh, being a trend? And because of it being a trend, um, it creates uh, a lot of problems, right? Someone. What do you mean by trend? Uh, well, it's a trend, right? I think most young people support trans issues, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a trend in that regard just because most young people support it. I think it's just that it's a lot more visible than it was in previous years. I feel like most, uh, not most, I shouldn't say most. I feel like, let me ask you this. Do yeah. you think that younger people are coming out um as part of the lgbtq in whatever category um for clout in some cases honestly i don't think they would because it's a fucking it's a really fucking hard life you know i, don't I have think kids like i don't oh think no it, it fucking sucks like because like a lot of people know me as the trans streamer, right? Like I get a lot of like younger trans people constantly coming in my chat. Like they're fucking terrified because they want to come out and they know like if they come out, there's a non-zero chance that their families, a lot of them are like really Christian, are going to put them through conversion therapy. You know, well, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about trans. Uh, I'm talking about the full LGBTQ. Um. I feel in many ways that it's a, like a trendy thing. And I see a, um, a lot of young people, um, so many young people uh, claiming to be a, a part of the LGBTQ um, where it looks more like a trend. Yeah, I mean, it's it's also one of those things, right, where I can't tell how much of that maps onto reality because like we're seeing a snapshot online where all of the people who identify that way are conglomerated together. Um, I mean, like, I'm happy, though. I'm happy, obviously, that things are changing and people can feel, like, more comfortable being themselves. I, I honestly, like, I think the, like, the majority of people are bisexual. Like, I don't think straight is actually the majority. Interesting. Look, I was a teenage boy, okay? A hole's a hole. It doesn't matter. I'm so, so like, but for, from my perspective as a straight 
man, right? Yeah. I just wouldn't think that, right? From your perspective, um, I can see how you have your opinion. It's like we're all we're all experiencing uh life in many different realities. Um base truth is like almost impossible to uh to recognize. Yeah. Wait, pardon, what was that? The last thing you said. Oh, uh base truth is like the actual facts, actual truth, actual reality is um relatively hard to recognize because we all uh I believe have lenses on and we're we're seeing the world different. We're experiencing reality different. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, it's it's hard, you know? We're all raised with different belief structures and we all have different life experiences that obviously shape how we view the world. But I think there should be more dialogues, you know? Like more conversations happening where people don't just like start shouting at each other because I think that's the only way that things can actually change. There's just too what, much closing off, you know what I mean? And social do media doesn't help. I, I agree. What do you think of, um, th this is an issue that I, um, always had a problem with. What do you think of cis people? Oh, and again, I think I'm using the right term here, uh, of putting pronouns in their bio. Um, cause I always saw that as like, like a clout Jack, right? Like someone's just doing that, um, for attention. And I guess the counter argument to that which uh, I've learned recently is that people do that to uh, help protect trans people um, from getting online hate. Yeah, I see. I, I'm actually torn on this one. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with putting pronouns in bio. Um, I think it helps normalize it for a lot of people who do put pronouns in their bio who are trans. Um, the one thing that I can't stand is like when I'm in some sort of like actual IRL space and it, they have like the circle where everyone introduces themselves and it's obvious I'm the only trans person in the room and then they do the pronoun thing. And it feels like in that kind of situation, they're just trying to be like, okay, who's the tranny in the room? I got to find out, you know, it doesn't yeah, feel like it's like actually sincere. That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's, that's, that's been my, one of my main issues with, uh, pronouns in the bio. Um, the other thing is like they, them, like, I'm just so lost. I'm so lost. I don't, I don't know how to refer to someone as they and them. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's pretty easy. If you can refer to a group of people, um, like if you're not used to it at first, obviously, you know, you might slip up a bit, but I, I don't know. It's like, even if people like you, fuck up with pronouns, it's like, I think the best, res the best thing is just be like, oh, my bad. And just like, not think about it again. Like the worst thing is like, okay. Like where I'm at, um, where I am at currently is that I don't get a lot of hate in person. Um, but what I get is overly performative liberals who are absolutely fucking insufferable. And a lot of the time, I don't even tell people in person I'm trans just because I don't want to be given the you're so brave speech. I fucking hate that. Like, I'm just a person, you know, I just want to live my life. Well, that's part of the trend aspect, right? Um, you know, when someone comes out, I, I feel like it's an automatic uh viral moment of support online i think it, at the start it's really validating like i remember when i went to the first pride parade i ever went to you know like i was um 17 years old and it was the first time i had been in a space with more than one gay person or more than one trans person and i was just i was crying you know it felt like I finally belonged somewhere in the world. But, you know, as the years go by and like years turn into like more than a decade, it's 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 not as necessary. Like, I don't need the validation. Right. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I understand like how someone coming out needs support right away. Um, 
uh, from that community and whatnot. Um, but a lot of it just seems like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say that because I don't want to in invalidate, uh, you know, someone that's being honest, but I feel like this community, uh, can be taken advantage of so much because there is that support system online. You know what I mean? Oh no, it's really easy to take advantage of trans people, unfortunately. Like it's a lot of really vulnerable people and it's easy to just make shit up about them and post it on social media and encourage people to laugh at them. That's something I've had to deal with a lot. I've gotten so much uh, hate over uh, me being the new trans ally icon um, from so many different people online. And I'm, I'm so fucking confused by it. It's like, I mean, what did I say that was so edgy and wild, right? That I not, that I understand that trans men, uh, would need tampons. They still have their periods. Um, like I did find like one old tweet, but it's like the things that are like really objectionable are from like 2021. Like it's, it's all two years now. Like someone said, trans women are women. And you quote tween, you said, why do you call them trans women then? Um, that, I think that was in response to Adam and Soleil and Slim made a sex tape with a transgender OnlyFans woman. Unfortunately, someone sent me the video. I don't know, she's kind of hot. Um, yeah, I, I would say that trans women are women. If somebody wants to be recognized um, as a woman, uh, I will recognize them as a woman. I have no issue in that. I'm not trying to offend anyone, all right? But... He's referring to her as a trans woman. Yeah, that, that makes sense. It's like if you're, you know, if you need a clarification. Why it's did like I get, get sent a tweet of my own? Um, we get we get caught up in um, these weird like, uh, you know, dialogue things, right? Um, yes, trans women are women. However, all right. Mm hmm. They're a trans woman as well. It's two things. Oh yeah, no, right? it's two it's two things, but it's just like um, you know, you could say the same thing like Italian women are women. It's like, okay, why aren't you just calling them women? Why do you have to clarify that they are Italian women? You know, it's a descriptor. Well, I think it's important to recognize that um, you know, Slim is a supporter of the trans community. I actually don't know who Slim you see, it's like I don't know anyone in this entire you cover so much drama. I have no idea who any of these people are. Oh, Slim and um, Slim is a, a boxer, an influencer boxer who's uh, currently undefeated. As he, hmm. And uh, I seen chat was uh, really tearing me up over not being able to like really adapt to the they them. I'm forty years old. I am 40 years old, people. Look, there if, were, <laughs> there if, if no my dad in, if my dad when he was in his 50s could get it, you can get it. I believe in you. Other people might not believe in you, but I believe in you. If somebody in my real life uh, wanted to be referred to as they, them, um, I don't know how I'd ever be able to just do that. I don't know. I mean, I would. I would, but I'd have to consciously go out of my way um, to uh, not misgender. Like, it would be quite the challenge not to do that. I think it's, you know, it's not that hard. I think, like, in the first, in the first bit, maybe, like, in the first couple months or something, you'd fuck up a bunch, but then you'd just get used to it. I think people would look at me strange if I was, like, referring to someone, like... Yeah, they went um they went to uh Target to to get some new clothes or something. That doesn't sound I like think, a weird sentence. I think whoever was I'm having the conversation with would be like, Who's they? <laughs> then you say their name. So and so. Well, who were they with? No, they were by themselves. Like, you know what I mean? It just doesn't Well maybe it it's like you gotta get into a situation well. like this, you know? before and then see if these kind of situations actually come up 
I've had, you know, I dated, uh, I dated a they, them, put, wait, why did I just say they, them, pussy? My fucking brain. I dated someone who used they, them pronouns, and the situation, it's pretty good, uh, but that situation came up a couple times, and I just clarified, it. it's like, no, they just use they, them pronouns, and the other person's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how I would be able to adapt to that. That would be really challenging for me. Yeah, I don't know. I I think you could do it. If you were in a situation where you had to. Maybe. Uh, what about, okay, so here's here's um, some things that I'm dying to ask you about. Yeah. All right? So there's a, um, there's a Twitch streamer that identifies as a deer. Are you familiar with this? Oh, I know Doe. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that Doe actually identifies as a deer. I think that's... Like, I don't... I think that was just, like, a thing. Like, they like to dress up as a deer sometimes. Um, so people, people that are not a part of the trans community... Um, and I mean, it's not- like... When I'm, like, you know, when I'm on stream and I'm wearing cat ears, no one's like, wow, you know, Keffels literally identifies as cat gender. Is like no, I'm just dressing up like a cat girl. There's there's no like deeper meaning here. People just like cat ears and tits. All right. Well, let's say someone um, did refer to themselves as like an animal, right? Um, do you refer to them as an animal? Do you actually refer to them as dear doe? Um. You know, no, no. I wait. I don't want to use my friend as an example, um, but like I've never actually met someone because this is like a completely different thing than trans issues, right? Like I think these, it's not trans species. There's like an entirely it, other kin. That's like an entirely different thing. I, I have never actually, okay, I've met one of them and they were weird as fuck, but I know little about other kin. But from my perspective, right? Um, you know, just looking at this, you know, a thousand uh, feet in the air, looking down at the whole situation. Um, I think the trans community gets a lot of hate from the outside world from situations like that. Someone identifying themselves as like an animal or something. Those um, scenarios get highlighted. All right. Um, People in the trans community with like really, really bad ideas um, that they put forth, those get highlighted and represent the entire community. I mean, that's the problem with social media and outrage cycles, right? Like, the worst things are always going to float to the top because it's easy. The algorithms are powered by outrage. Uh, the people with the best and smartest ideas, those aren't going to go viral, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish these people that keep saying that I'm brain dead would call in. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like it's a completely different thing and my my biggest my biggest thing is that I don't think it's fair to expect trans people to have to you know with the whole community expecting us to like have to um change our behaviors or like reflexively denounce every single person who has a bad idea or does something cringe. That's not fair. Like, can you imagine if every like, you know, Every time, like, fucking Logan Paul did something shitty, they'd be like, Keem, Keem, you need to fucking say something, Keem. He's making the white, straight, heterosexual man community look bad. Whoa, are you... I think, I think Keem just went quiet. What is happening? I think we just lost Keem. Testing, testing. There we All go. All right, you're on. Okay, hold on. So, um, my my actual cord. You're having cord issues. I'm having cord issues too. The cord that goes into my microphone, I pulled it out accidentally. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" I thought I was getting hacked. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, now I lost my train of thought. I was saying, like, don't you think it would be silly if, like, any time, like, fucking Logan Paul or some other dipshit uh, did something stupid, people would be like, Keem, you need to say something. You need to, um, 
You need to make sure that people know that Logan Paul does not represent the straight, white, heterosexual male community. No, that'd be fucking stupid. He has nothing to do I, with you, but he, besides sharing these attributes. I think that's a great point. I think that's a, uh, a great point, but there's just, I guess, um, you know, cis people are seen as like uh, normal, right? Because they're the majority, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I don't like... I don't like that it's like that, but obviously people do see it as the default because that's the majority of people. Right. Um, God, I had such a great point. I know I can't remember. Oh, I want to ask you this. This has been a meme forever online. And uh, I've never actually had this conversation with a trans person, which I know goes... Uh, in uh in opposed to exactly what you just said that you're not the representative of the entire community but um how many genders are there because i honestly don't know my favorite was joe like joe biden's answer he said at least three that's the best answer that's the one i give what what are those three you know i he never finished that question so i'll, I'll wait to, i'll wait until he finishes the answer he gives the you answer. Ran, you ran for uh, for office at one point, right? Before you became a Twitch streamer. Yeah, true. What What exactly are your politics? My politics, like I'm a leftist. Nowadays, I think I would identify as a democratic socialist, somewhere around there. Why? Um, I like. I like socialized healthcare a lot. Obviously, like I think everyone has the right to a roof over their head and education. I think corporations are really fucking things up and overinflation crisis is insane. Like food banks are going up by like 60% in terms of how many people are going to be using them this year in Canada. It's crazy. I mean, those are good points that the corporations are like taking everything. Um, in my lifetime, Walmart would move into an area and all the small businesses would immediately shut down because you can just go to Walmart and everything's there. Uh, the malls are all closing down near me because why go to the mall when you can go online? It's open 24 seven. Um, you know, big corporations are buying up all the property in yeah. America right now. Um, there's a lot of issues um, with them gaining too much power. However, um, you know, if you move completely socialist, then you lose the American dream in my country. Yeah, I think it really depends like how people are defining socialism and it, it gets into this whole like back and forth. It seems like at least like, um, you know, in politics in the United States, um, what has constituted socialism has become like way, way less radical in its implementation, but seen as way more radical than it is. And what I mean is just like, there's a social democratic party in like almost every country in Europe that's advocating for the things I just said, but they're not considered, um, socialist parties or even communist parties. But in the U S it's like, if you advocate those same things, like you were fucking Joseph Stalin. It's crazy. I what do you think of our, what you brought up, uh, Joe Biden? What do you think of our president? Um, I don't, I don't even fucking, no one's asked me that question before. I don't even know what the fuck to make of Joe Biden. <laughs> How do you, yeah, he's a guy. He's, he's definitely one of the presidents of all time. <laughs> of all of the presidents that have ever been. I feel like this is the only time in my lifetime where I felt like we don't have a leader. Like, I just, like, is when I see Joe Biden speak, I'm like, he's not <laughs> running the country. There's no way he's run. That guy is not running the country. He is not making the decisions. Someone I do like is. the conspiracies that he's just completely senile and there's just like an entire entourage of feds that are just puppeteering him around. I think it's true. I don't know how it couldn't be true. I I don't know if it's true. I, I feel like it's probably just a lot easier to be president than people think. 
Yeah. Especially like if I was going senile, I would care a lot less if people were mad at me, I think. It'd probably be an asset for being president. Wouldn't remember. I, like I put out this tweet a, um, maybe a week ago or something where it's so obviously, uh, it's so obvious, excuse me, that they're trying to push Joe Biden out, the Democratic Party is, and the liberal media, by, um, by going uh, on him so hard for finding these, uh, these documents, these classified documents that he had hidden um, at his house and a couple other places. It's like, it's so strange to see him attacked this hard by our media. Wait, because uh, normally they're extremely biased. Joe Biden? Yeah. I haven't even been following. I've been like so fucking burnt out on politics lately. I feel like almost completely tuned out. So Trump had secret documents at his place and the media tore him to shreds for it. Then they found that Biden had secret documents as well. And now they're tearing him to shred. And I'm like, they're definitely trying to push him out. They don't want Joe Biden to run again. Oh, no, I don't think that I don't think so either. Like the only reason that he won, at least in my opinion, is because the pandemic had just started and it was really easy to get Trump out and they needed a guy. And he's like this old guard establishment figure that people remember from the Obama administration. Yeah. And, you know, with Trump being an outsider, it was really like um, a back to business. It was like a back to business move. Like Trump, it's OK. It's time to go back. You know, we're not playing around anymore. Not that I agree with it. That's at least how I feel. Like it was just like a return to order or some shit. Do you know who uh, Matt Tabidi to, to or I think that's his name? Oh, uh, yeah, I know him. Of, Had him on stream a couple times. He's one of the people that came out with the, the Twitter um, files or whatnot. What's up, Brantley? <laughs> Matt Binder. Um, Anyhow, he, I, him or somebody on his show once made this argument that I thought was really good. You know how they say conservatives are constantly being, um, you know, banned and whatnot on Twitter uh, before Elon took over. He said him or someone else near him basically said, no, it's just people that are anti-establishment are the ones being silenced. Hmm. I don't even know. So you don't dive into politics that much. I thought you were like a political person. I am. I just like, uh, it's been hard lately. You've just... been focused on the. Uh, well, yeah, polling. no, I wasn't prepared for the politics conversation. I brought you on about um, trans issues specifically, why you decide to make this turn. You know? <laughs> and you said you didn't, but you obviously did. Like, even like back in... Um, like, when was this? October. The tweet was, and in reply to me, and then you deleted it, like, well, you look like the type of guy, oops, woman, I forgot my joke. Like, you definitely, you Yeah, know, but that's a joke. That's a joke. There's no way that, you know, hurt anyone's feelings. Come it on. didn't, I don't know, that might have hurt another person's feelings. It didn't hurt mine, but I feel like, like, would you still make that kind of joke about another trans person? If... Well, me and you had um, a rapport, right? Or, um, you know, me and you had, were, like, on good terms as far as talking shit back and forth and having fun with it, right? Oh, yeah, like, at this point, I don't care. Like, but at that point, we had not talked. I just think that's a joke. If you, if you reached out to me and said, hey, this really offended me, I would apologize. Mm hmm You know? I don't think that... I've ever been anti-trans. I don't think I've ever had hate in my heart for trans people. Um, I think uh, a lot of it is just um, not understanding. You know what I mean? Not really understanding trans issues because how would I, you know? How does any normal person yeah. that doesn't have contact with trans people um, um, that isn't in the LGBTQ uh, I, or trans community understand all the issues of trans people. Like you I just don't think can't. you need to understand every issue, but I also don't think that you need to have 
you know, I don't think you need to explicitly be a hateful person to do transphobic things. Like, yeah, some of these tweets, like, doing that shit, that's not great. That's not right, Keem. There's I mean, so many I other can... ways you could roast me. That's like the, that's the lack of creativity I was talking about. You no, because you're, you're ruining it because you said that I'm the type of guy, right? Right. To do something else. Like, I remember that tweet. You said, I'm the type of guy, right, that finds a okay. date at a high school or some shit, right? That was your initial joke. Okay, you know I what? I do appreciate, like... Everything aside, I that is something I actually appreciate is that you can take a like you can take being roasted and you can even think it's funny. Like when I tweeted out like uh when you were on like that last stream that I was on, you said you thought I was beautiful, and then I tweeted out that it's because you found out my pussy is under 18 years old and you thought that was really funny. I was like, I like that you can get roasted and take a joke. That's actually most people yeah, in the I'm, politics scene, they, they can't do that. They will get so yeah. fucking steamed. But I'm roasting you back and you're saying you can't take that joke. Well, okay, I can take the joke. I can take it. I don't care. But It's not coming from a place of, I hate you because you're trans. I mean, I'm cracking a joke. You said, I'm the type of guy that did so-and-so. And I respond, well, you're the type of guy, oops, uh, I mean, woman, I forgot my joke. I mean, that's funny. Yeah, it's like... I think that it's like you shouldn't be comfortable with it because I'm a pretty, I'm, I would say I'm probably more edgy than most trans people that you'll come across on Twitter. But a lot of people will not be able to see that and think it's funny or even tolerate it in the slightest. Like it'll upset them a lot, especially if they're already dealing with a lot of shit in their interpersonal lives. I stand by that joke. I still think it's funny. And I don't think it, you know, I don't think that represents hate towards any trans person. Okay, but what if the people who are who like those jokes are actually hateful and by making these jokes you're enabling them? Like well, the shit with Mr. Medicare, you know, like you were like I got in shit for this cuz I said him uh, you know, him retiring from cancer was a skill issue and people like got all upset at me even though those are the kinds of jokes he himself would make about another person. I know the kind of person he is. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I was thinking about something and I didn't really track, uh, that whole conversation. Um, what did M Mr. Medicare do again? He did a stream about me. Um, okay. actually it was like two different streams in one of the streams that he did about me. He encouraged um he encourages audience to spam 41 percent in relation to me like making trans suicide jokes and in another instance he um he was talking about like cloudflare dropping kiwi farms and he made a fake um a fake what was it like a fake um update from cloudflare from the ceo where it said um you will never be a woman did you know, he's like obviously just doing like really transphobic jokes. And he's encouraged yeah, well, his community to like constantly go after me and dogpile me and dead name me. And it just, it's so fucking like, not only is it bigoted, it's just incredibly fucking lazy. Like, where's the creativity in the commentary space? Like, why do they have to go to the lowest common denominator? It's so easy to make transphobic jokes, but it actually takes some fucking brain using like even a little bit of your brain to come up with something better than that. Well, how you're describing that sounds like harassment, right? Um, I don't think my joke to you uh, resulted in harassment. You know what I mean? Like I- uh, No, it, it didn't. I mean, there are probably some people who like d piled on, but I don't even check my Twitter replies. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> but it's like, you know, my joke of, well, you're the type of guy excuse me, woman, woman, and correcting that. Um, I just I don't think that's like even remotely in the same level as campaigning people to like spam you. And like, you know, those are two wildly different things. Okay, that's fair. I mean, also, I think it's really funny doing those back and forth. I feel like the weirdest person to be like making this kind of, conver you know, having this conversation. 
But I know for a fact, like, if you did that to another trans person that was not me, they would get very upset. Like, not in any sort of performative way, you would legitimately, you would, like, legitimately ruin their day. I don't think I've ever bullied somebody um, for being trans. Hmm. Ever. Or went out of my way to harass somebody because they're trans. Now, I'm sure I've done or said something that people would perceive as me doing that. Uh, you know, I've been on the internet forever, right? Um, but I don't think that that was ever my intent, ever, um, to harass mm -hmm. someone simply because they are trans. Yeah, I, I don't remember an instance of this. I mean, at least with me, it's like I called you a fucking pedophile before it got to that point. Like, it was definitely like a, a slap fight. Yeah, so you're calling me a pedophile, yeah. right? I mean, my response, which isn't true, by the way. I know everyone loves saying that. It's not true. I'm not into uh, to kids. Uh, my girlfriend is 22, and there's an age gap there, so people like to run with that fucking meme, but it's just not fucking true. And it, And... Can I say it's a little mm. insulting because I've exposed so many of these fucking pedophiles online throughout my career and even put some of them in jail for their fucking crimes against kids. Okay, but uh, didn't you also, like, get that wrong? Like, one of the first Twitch streamers I became friends with when I got on this platform was RS Glory and Gold. Didn't you, like, pedo jacket this guy and there was, like, there was nothing? Oh, people, people love to bring that up as an example, but they don't bring up the examples of me, um, you know, actually putting some of these creeps in jail or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so people describe that situation like you just did, or people say Keemstar falsely accused this guy of being a pedo, and there's never any context added to, uh, to that story at all. Um, but here is the context. So Drama Alert was relatively uh, young, was only like three years old at the time. Um, it got to the point where I was not doing all the work myself. I had a news team to gather news, et cetera, et cetera. And instead of everything being thrown into a Skype chat where I picked and choose the stories that I wanted to cover and fact checked everything myself, um, we had a Google Doc and the head of the Drama Alert news team at the time, Chipmunk, um, would get there were volunteers that worked for me at the time that would gather news he would go and vet all that news and then the stuff that's good to air and 100 percent correct would end up in a google doc so mm -hmm. i'm looking at the google doc um all this news is good to go i cover it on my show and i think the story was that you know uh, a pedophile that was arrested is out on jail um, out, you know, released from jail and he's streaming RuneScape, uh, cover the story. It's out for like maybe an hour or so. Right. And I'm currently streaming at the time and people come to my chat and they're like, you got the wrong, this is a mistake. You got the wrong guy. This is not that guy. And I'm like, wait, what? And RS Glory and Gold showed his license like right. on stream to prove that he is not that individual. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. So I immediately deleted the video. Um, I made a Twitter video telling everyone, you know, that this got deleted. This is why this person is not who he says he is. So nobody exposed Keemstar for getting this wrong. Keemstar exposed Keemstar for getting this wrong. I'm glad that and you admitted that you got it wrong because yeah, that fuck. I remember yeah, well, he was upset about that for a long time. So again, he wasn't upset about it for a long time. It's again the context of the story is completely manipulated by the internet because of bad actors like Ethan Klein. So uh, Wait, how is Ethan Klein a bad? Oh boy, this this feels like I'm getting into a thing. How is he a bad actor? <sighs> Where do I begin? But let me finish this story first. So, um, so I uploaded a full video explaining what went wrong, okay. not just on Twitter announcing that it's taken down and we got this wrong, but on the YouTube channel, apologizing to him. Um, I got in contact with him. I offered him $20,000 in damages like right away. And again, this video mm -hmm. was only up for an hour. 
Um, he didn't want my money. He responded to me the next day and said, look, I just want your friendship. I was like, okay. So he was into RuneScape. So then I offered to fly him to a RuneScape event, um, which he declined that as well. And again, it was just, I want to be your friend. Okay, we'll, we'll be friends. Um, so I would talk to him often. I went on a stream, actually played RuneScape with him, which is the most boring game ever. I could not get into it. Um, but I was just trying to um, make him happy because I seriously wronged this individual, right? A um, couple months go by. He went from having like 50 viewers to having 11,000 people on his live stream because of this incident because it was so big. Um, mainstream media picked up on it, um, et cetera, et cetera. A um, couple months go by and his stream numbers obviously start going down because they were not there for his entertainment. They were there to you know, help the poor guy out because this horrible thing took place. So I was getting a lot of phone calls from Tony, um, you know, asking me for advice and what to do um, to get his stream numbers up. I said, look, you know, when we did the collaboration the other time, it popped off. Like, I'm, I'm down to do another collaboration with you. Um, he was from Kansas City. I was going mm -hmm. to Kansas City to do a fan meetup in 2015. And I said, or maybe it was 2016. And I was like, when I go there, let's meet up. So I get there and I'm trying to meet up with him uh, and he ignored me. He didn't, or no, wait, he did respond. Okay, um, I just wanted to fact check. He at no point averaged 11,000 viewers on Twitch. His highest all-time average is 267 viewers in May, 2020. That's not true. He had 11,000. I seen it with my own eyes. Here's his, I put it on screen. Here's his lifetime on Twitch tracker. Capping yeah, but at 267. Not, but it's not going, it stops at 2017. Right. Calvin. It's, no, it doesn't. It goes all the way until that, October, 2022. No, you have to go farther back. The incident happened in like 2000. Um, right. His, he, his all time highest recorded December 1st. 12,847 and but that was one stream and in that month um in 2018 how much he he got less than 100 average viewers so it was like a one-off stream you're talking about yeah it was it but it took place when the incident happened all right so when the incident happened in 2015 or something like that um the very next day, he had like 11,000 concurrent viewers in his stream. The chart that you're showing only goes back to 2017. Um, no, it goes back to 2016. I, I know for a fact he had 11,000 people in his stream. I saw it with my own eyes. It could it have been rare. like, it could have been a one-off. I just thought I should clarify it because the way that you were framing it made it sound like he averaged in one month that many viewers. If he did, that's an insane fucking drop-off. I have never seen anyone fall off that hard. It was, it was one stream. It was after the incident. Right. It was one stream after the incident. And then he would have like, you know, I don't know, 8,000 the next day and, you know, 5,000 the next and like stuff like that. He did... Um, collaboration streams with like Scares, who was my main competitor, who really covered the story to dunk on me for getting this wrong. Um, it was, uh, oh, I didn't explain the Google Doc, did I? Did I explain the Google Doc and what happened no. and how we got this wrong? Oh my God, yeah, this is the key part. So the people that were volunteering uh, for Dromler at the time had access to the Google Doc, and I didn't know that. Chip didn't know that, which was the head of drama at the time. Um, so I'm thinking that these stories are vetted by Chip and they're all good for air when really, you know, basically tips like mm -hmm. news tips were being thrown into the Google doc. And that's where the confusion came from where I ran that story on air. Uh, and when I explained that, you know, I got a, a lot of hate, like, Oh dude, it's your fault. Take responsibility. I did. I more than did. I exposed myself for getting it wrong. I've offered anything I could do with Tony to make things right. Um, 
But now let's fast forward to like uh, 2015 or whenever that was when I did the fan meetup in Kansas City. Uh, mm -hmm. He ghosted me. And at that time, his numbers were going down, down, down. Who's that? What? Oh, my God. You look great. Hey, I'm sorry. My <laughs> girlfriend just came down with our friend on FaceTime to say hi. Um, so, so basically, um, really, <laughs> that's okay. I mean, like, out of All respect for him, we don't really have to go into like the whole thing, like out of respect for him. He recently passed away. Um, cancer fucking sucks, but yeah. I, I feel like the real takeaway is you really shouldn't be using, um, a YouTube channel and a large platform to do vigilante justice because there's going to be a chance you get it wrong and people could get really fucking hurt. In that case, it wasn't as bad as it could have been, but holy shit, could it get bad? Well, I never used my platform to do visually, you know, justice the way the way I my channel was not an activist channel. But you were saying that earlier, like you were saying, like, um, you've used your platform to uh, go after a lot of pedophiles in the past. And that that's vigilante justice. That's like taking the law into your own hands. No, I covered the story. Um, found, you know, in many cases, like just undeniable proof that this person is guilty. Um, and then, you know, provided, uh, you know, the authorities with all the proof they needed to make arrest. I got sued by two different um, individuals that were messing around with kids. Sued and won both cases. One of them being Romeo Lacrosse and the other one being Line Maker. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff I wasn't even. A lot of stuff I. God fucking microphone. Holy shit. I hate tech issues. I was saying that it was like a lot of stuff I wasn't really around for. I wish I knew more about, but I don't. Like with you, it's well, like, I know bits and pieces throughout the years because people talk about like certain talking points more than others. You know, one of the cases that you could call me an activist for might be um, Ray Diaz. Ray Diaz was a... Uh, and I might get these ages wrong, but the way I remember it, he was like 30, 32 or something. He was lying about his age online. He was saying that he was like in his like 24 or something along those lines. And he would be hitting on like 16 year old girls on Instagram and whatnot. So we start covering the story that he's hitting on the 16 year old influencer in the comment section and how cringe that is. And then we uncover his real age. And then we find out that he was currently dating um, a 17-year-old in California, which is against the law. And then we interviewed the 17-year-old after she escaped him. Or, or no, we interviewed the mother who was describing you know, her problems with this. Um, and it turned out that he did a lot of horrible things to this girl, which then we interviewed the girl. And then... You know, I think we asked the LAPD to, like, do something, and they arrested him. Hmm. So it's like, there's cases where you could say... Could that, you have done you know, all of these things, like getting the police involved without m turning it into monetizable content first? Because, like, it's a conflict of interest if you're actually just, like, using your, ch using your channel to do pedo hunting. I didn't do pedo hunting. What are you talking about? Because you're saying that you've, you've used your channel, you've done multiple videos where you're exposing pedophiles, you're going after them, um, you're bringing all this proof to the police. Isn't that pedo hunting? Um, well, it's like, is CNN or any news outlet doing pedo hunting if they're covering a story uh, based on someone that's a pedophile? Well, it sounds more like to catch a predator than a news story. And that ended with someone killing themselves, and then the show was canceled. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like to cr catch a uh, predator or whatever, that show was um, 
catfishing individuals to bait them into uh, to pedophile activity. My show did not do that. My show is covering, you know, a, a, a victim, an alleged victim coming out with their story of what's going on, leaked DMs, stuff like that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. see how the two can compare. Because I just mean in, in the case of the news covering that, I don't think they're the ones who are blowing the whistle in the first place. Like the police are usually involved before journalists even get involved in these sort of situations. Uh, I, I disagree with that. I don't, I don't think that's the case. Have you covered or reacted to, you know, allegations uh, involving like adults inappropriately um, communicating with minors on your stream? Um, yeah, I've, I covered it once in the case of like a VR chat predator, but in, in that situation, it was reported on by the time the police got involved. And I haven't actually like talked about it too much. Yeah. So but my really point was just I like, if you, if there's a potential there where you could get it wrong, like you did, that could be dangerous. Like going back to swatting, you could end up getting someone swatted or destroying someone's reputation because you aren't doing like 100% due diligence or you don't have all the facts in front of you. I, I don't really know how to understand that because you're, you're talking about the issue with glory and gold, which was, you know, a complete clusterfuck. Um, and then you're applying that to my uh, entire career, which uh, it just doesn't compute. I mean, fair. I haven't actually, like, I haven't watched a lot of your content. Most of my interactions with you have been on Twitter. I think I watched your retirement video. Yeah. Did Drama Alert die then? Or, like, what happened? On YouTube, pretty much. Um, so... Short form content is taking over uh, the internet. You have YouTube doing YouTube shorts. You have TikTok. Um, you have Instagram focusing on that. Snapchat, like every single platform is now focused on um, short form content. Mm -hmm. And I was the first one to um, do a TMZ style show on YouTube. Um, well, pretty much on the internet um, that would cover... <sighs> online celebrities because at that time when i started in late 2012 uh tmz or media outlets would not cover youtubers they did not look at them as yeah celebrities. i um sorry i need to i'm gonna destroy this i'm throwing this mic out the window after this um no, I thought it was funny you brought up tmz because I, there was there's an unaired tmz a video about me because it was such a clusterfuck. I guess they they were like, no, we're just gonna completely scrap this. Uh, okay, what happened is they had me on. Um, you know, I was over as it was over a Zoom call. It was like after the swatting. Um, I was doing it from like a hotel, and I was on stream when I was doing it, and I guess I accidentally flashed the Zoom link. So a whole bunch of Kiwi farmers got the link and they started jumping in the call and like yelling racial slurs at the TMZ hosts. I, it was fucking surreal. I, I kind of wish that I could get a copy of that. Interesting. But to, um, to continue with, uh, me retiring, right. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always wanted to retire at age 40. I always wanted to just leave the internet because to, to do my show was a lot of intense work and you constantly have to be terminally online in order to produce the show that I was doing. And ultimately I just needed uh, a break in my life, like a major, uh, a major change on multiple levels. Like my personal life, um, my relationship with my baby mama was, you know, uh, just not there anymore, really. You know, it wasn't like fighting and screaming. It just, you know, fell out of love or whatever. Um, you know, I fell out of love of doing drama alert. 
uh, the motivation wasn't there. So like, I just, I, I was ready to, uh, to leave when I was 40 years old to just leave the internet. And on top of that short form content, like I was saying before, um, became very, very popular. And when I started Drumler, I was like the only one of its kind covering these online celebrities. But then short form content got so popular and there's like so many different, uh, drum alert clones, if you will, uh, people that cover, um, online celebrities in short form content. So there's not really a need for a show like mine anymore. It's like, if you want to find out about Logan Paul scamming or his response or whatever, um, you can either go to the source, which is CoffeeZilla or Logan Paul himself, or you can just search it up on TikTok and you're going to get all the information like that real fast. Right. Um, so the need for my show um, kind of completely died, in my opinion, and the views were going down and down and down. And, uh, to produce a 10 minute show on YouTube, which all my videos are like 10 minutes, uh, you need multiple different stories. There's not drama like there was back in the day, like back in 2016, I mean, I'd have like 15 stories and I could pick five out of the 15. We don't really have that anymore because the online community now, uh, content creators are walking, talking commercial. They're nonstop fake. Um, they don't want to do anything that's going to, you know, mess up their brand deals or career in any way. So we're not seeing real opinions from content creators anymore. People are not voicing how they really feel. They're talking under the guise of, um, I don't want to get canceled 24 seven. So a lot of that stopped, um, the drama and the fights back and forth between online content creators. And so mm -hmm. it would take longer to get a 10 minute video. And by then every, you know, 14 year old with a, with a smartphone has beat me to the story on TikTok. So I just focused on our, our Snapchat, um, branch of drama alert. And that's what I've been doing every day. I make a drama alert video on Snapchat instead, which is still wildly uh, successful, but in YouTube form, it just doesn't make sense. And I think if I do come back to YouTube where, um, I'm making YouTube content on drama or again in the future, it would have to be, you know, interviews with content creators. Yeah. I mean, like you're, I know you're still doing like the Keemstar show. Yeah. Starting a podcast in 2022, very challenging. You know, I've been on two wildly, well, technically three wildly successful podcasts in the past. Boy, it is hard to start a podcast now. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that everybody under the sun has a podcast now. And YouTube has changed. It's really leaning towards long form content. So, um, on YouTube, if you upload like, um, you know, an hour long video, you're just getting more views, you're getting more watch time and you're getting more views. So most of the commentating people, uh, commentators and whatnot, most all, all YouTubers on every aspect is making their content much longer to get more views because they get more watch time, mm -hmm. which the side effect of that is like, that doesn't help my 10 minute videos on, on drama art, but also it doesn't help the community aspect back in the day, kids would get home from school, um, and they would watch, I don't know, maybe like. 15 different YouTubers before they went to bed because every video was like seven minutes, 10 minutes long. So yeah. they'd watch multiple different content creators now because of everyone making long form content, like t anywhere between I, 20 minutes and 40 minutes, they can only watch a few. I people. didn't, I didn't want to, I wanted to get onto this cause like it got derailed, but I want to know why don't, what's the deal with you and Ethan? Why, why is there such animosity? I wasn't around for it. I know he fucking hates you. He said, yeah. by the way, he said he was happy for you that, that you've, that if, um, if you've actually decided to go like full hog supporting the trans community, um, uh, yeah. I'm happy for Is him it? that he's losing weight because mentally, you know, he has not been doing good. 2022 was the worst year of his life. Every single month he was canceled for something. That's true. He, like, if he really wants good mental health, he should be dating someone more than ha like less than half his age, right? 
Good one. Um, it stems from a lot, right? So, Leafy, uh, do you, are you familiar with Leafy? Is here? Oh, I'm fam I'm familiar. I wasn't familiar with his original thing, but I was following when he came back. So, Leafy is here. Um, uh, was an edgy, you know, commentator or whatnot. So was Ethan, and you know, they were kind of friends. And Leafy went and uh, made fun of an autistic man. And Reddit was trying to uh, cancel Leafy for it. And Ethan like kind of backstabs Leafy and um, to appeal to the Reddit crowd makes this like very social justice warrior type video uh, calling out Leafy and supporting the autistic guy. Um, and I say social justice warrior. Mm. And, you know, because at the time, Ethan was like, send love to this guy, um, the autistic man we're talking about, which is Tommy NC2010, I believe is his name. And the autistic uh, man um, basically said to Ethan, he's like, hey, will you come and do my show? And Ethan's like, sure. Ethan ghosted him after the story was dead. So, you know, it was very performative type video. Um. So that was the one thing that made me like, oh, Ethan's kind of a snake. When Ethan launched his podcast, the H3 podcast, the first guest was uh, Justin Roland, who's uh, recently been canceled. The second guest was PewDiePie, which uh, another person that Ethan backstabbed. And I was the third guest on the H3 podcast. I went on, did the episode, and I've always been a controversial figure, so... After oh, yeah. the episode, which I thought was great, you know, I met them in real life. They were lovely people. They were nice to me. After the episode, they got some hate. Um, and Ethan went and pandered to the community and left a comment saying, I know some of you guys hate Keemstar. I hate him too. And I was like, what the fuck? Why didn't you say that to my face? So that was kind of the, the, the very start of the beef. I mean, okay. What, what, what year was this? uh 2016 or 17 okay 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 i was trying to piece it together because i don't know anything the only thing that i remember was like the february 15th 2017 clip hey, everybody tweet at fucking h3 h3 death to all jews <laughs> i remember that yeah, everybody tweet i remember when you like told you know you were trying to encourage your uh audience to send anti-Semitic threats to a Jewish person. That was incredibly well, fucked just, up. I mean, that's just false. I mean, that's just completely false. That wasn't, so, was that a deep fake? It's not a deep fake, but it's just how you described that scenario is completely false. So at the time PewDiePie, he uh, did this edgy joke where he wanted to see if somebody on Fiverr for $5 would hold up a sign saying, you know, death to all, you know, I won't finish that because we're on Twitch. And these people did hold the sign that said that, right, for $5. And that was the joke. So at the time, Ethan Klein uh, defended PewDiePie. And the entire internet community um, at the time defended PewDiePie against the Wall Street Journal for trying to call him anti-Semitic because it was clearly a joke. What, what's the punchline? Death to all blank. Okay, that's not the pun. What, why is it a funny joke is why I'm asking. Well, the joke was for $5, will they say this thing that's completely offensive and horrible? If it's not offensive and it's not horrible, then the joke doesn't work. So simply by doing the joke, PewDiePie is recognizing that this is a horrible thing. He's not in support of that. You can see, like, even though I thought it was distasteful, but you can see how the context shifts, though, when you're literally saying this to someone who's Jewish, right? That's, like, at oh, that you're point... Cutting, it's... You're cutting me off before I finish the context. Okay. So... That was a big story. That was a big story that was going on, right? And, you know, Ethan Klein obviously was not offended by that. And so, because it was the meme and the ongoing meme, death to all, whatever, which no one believes 
it's not actually anti-Semitic. There's no hate, right? Because it's just a meme that people are saying, right? There's no actual hate behind that towards Jewish people. Um, what? You know, I was bringing... How? Because they're saying it as a meme. You, you they're not. They're... Do you understand? Do you understand the like the creation of a meme? Okay, but the problem is, There's... is that people use memes like that as a way to mask their actual intentions. Like, do you remember the Christchurch shooter? Like before he opened fire at a mosque, he said, "Subscribe to PewDiePie." You know, like that kind of shit actually does embolden people. Sure. But for most people at that time when that controversy was going on, um, that are quote tweeting that meme or, you know, using that meme, they don't actually mean it, right? Then it's not a real thing. It's not like really like they don't actually want any harm to come to Jewish people. You let's say that? it's like a meme. Let's say that's true. But the problem is it's so irony poisoned that you're giving cover to the people who do mean it. Like if it's okay, if it becomes acceptable to say death to all people from a specific ethnic group or sexuality or gender, um, just as a joke and you don't actually mean it, the people who do actually mean it get free reign to say it and you can't tell who's being sincere and who isn't. Sure, fair point. But it was a meme. That's my point. So, you know, I, I, I believe this was in reference that he said, like, uh, that he hates me or something. So on stream, I'm like, everybody go tweet at Ethan Klein saying death to all, you know, as the meme that's currently going on with PewDiePie. Not one of my fans, and, and they did this by, like, searching it up. You, you can, there's all these search stuff that you can do on YouTube, or excuse me, on Twitter to find, you know, um, if any, any of my fans like spammed him saying death to all, not one of my fans did it cause it was a joke. It's an actual joke. It's not a, like a, it's not a real statement. I have, I'm not anti-Semitic. I have no hatred towards Jewish people. Yeah. I, like, I don't know. I don't actually believe that. Like how you can and can't, uh, guarantee that they are a fan. Cause I know this shit happens like with me all the time. Like someone I don't even know is following me and they'll say something fucking awful. I'll get blamed for it. Even if I didn't tell them to do it. But like once you're actually instructing people to do something like that, that becomes targeted harassment. But nobody did it because it's a joke. It's a meme. And when you take that clip out of the context, out of the time frame, out of the whole scenario with the PewDiePie thing, when you take it completely out of that and show it in 2023, I mean, it looks pretty fucking bad, doesn't it? I feel like it, even with the context, like it looks really bad. I don't understand why you can't just own up to that one and be like, you know, even as a joke, I don't think telling people to wish death on Jewish people is acceptable. I don't think there's like any way to splice that. Okay, well, Kaffels. Yeah. I'm not actually wishing him death. Are you, are you not comprehending? I'm not actually no, I'm, wishing him death. I'm comprehending, but you're saying the words and the words have a meaning regardless of your intention. Yeah, the, the meaning is to reference the meme with PewDiePie. Right. Do you think the Christchurch shooter actually wanted people to subscribe to PewDiePie when he said well, that before turning on the live stream and killing like 16 I mean, people? I mean, how cheap is that, right? You're bringing up someone that did this horrible, horrendous crime and applying it to that meme that I said. Like, I mean, come on. Because it's Are we going to be fair here? I think it Are is fair. It? It's fair. I'm not saying you're responsible for what he, that guy did. He's obviously a horrendous person. But well, you can I, understand. Well I, admit, well, I admit that what I said, right, is in reference to an edgy meme yes like All it's right. like in 2016 you know when people decided like the okay symbol meant white power and then all the nazis were like you know it just it's just okay you triggered sjw's Apples. yeah go, please go and find um go find the time frame of when i said that on stream referencing the meme mm -hmm. and then go find the first time that ethan klein responds to it we're talking about four years difference where he knows that people will not understand the meaning 
or not be able to relate to it anymore and not, you know, um, remember the PewDiePie meme. If what I said was so horrible and offensive, all right, and why wasn't it reacted to immediately? Why wasn't it reacted to immediately? I mean, I wasn't there at the time. Like, I know that, like, Ethan even talked about that. But if you want to make a turnaround, I think the problem is that people are going to remember this other shit, too. It's going to be a whole process. I'm super fucking happy you've said all this cool stuff about the trans community. But fuck, man, there are a lot of skeletons in the closet. Like, I don't even know, like, about your side of the Etika stuff. Like, from the clips I saw, it looked like you were really egging on someone who was, like, ment really mentally ill. Well, I've already, I've already described, you know, I've already, like, talked about that situation. That situation's, like, absolutely fucking horrible. Um, but like I said, in reference to Etika, you know, it was very unclear that that was the issue. You know, directly from him, he was talking about his career and he was talking about these publicity stunts that he's doing and getting all this attention. Um, in his final video, um, before he passed away, he said, you know, I love you, Keem. I wish you the best or some shit like that. Um, but he also said, which is more important, is that he recognized in his final video that he has something wrong with him mentally and that he never thought that until that moment. Um, it's just a horrible situation. And if it wasn't for, like I said, his girlfriend, his mother, you know, his close friends reaching out to me um, and supporting me during all that, I, I just, I don't know. When you frame Team Star Killed Etika, um, it's just not true. I it's did not say, not I did not say those words. Ethan Klein did though. So when, if you say Keemstar did not handle the Attica, you know, uh, situation right, that is fair. And I deserve all the criticism in the world, but it didn't come from a place of, uh, trying to egg on a mentally ill person because I didn't believe that he was mentally ill. I mean, I... I want to believe you on it, but holy fuck, dude. Those clips were bad. They were really fucking bad. Well, that's, that's what clips are. They're taken out of the complete context of... of the actual scenario that's happened. Hello? Hi, I'm still here. I'm still here. It's just like, I'm, I don't know this shit. Why, not? Why do you fear death? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's, that, it's, it's, it's scary because if you really think about it, then why live? Just yeah. jump off a cliff. If, if it's, why live? Just, you're telling someone who's mentally ill. Why live? Just jump off a cliff. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, but you're saying that. You're saying that. You literally After said that. those words. To him. I'm talking, I'm talking about simulation theory. He was mentally ill. He, you should not have taken him as that coherently. Are you like, you know, we already had this conversation, right? Like, yeah, I know. I know. Okay. It just, it really rubbed me the oh. wrong way. Cause it's like, you know, I don't know anything about it and you're trying to butter me up. No, like, I'm, I'm explaining, I'm explaining my perspective on the entire situation. I'm not trying to butter you up. Okay. The, I can't hear the clip that you're playing, but the clip that you're playing, am I referring to, you can't believe that, uh, this world is a simulation. Does it say mm -hmm. that line? Yeah, it was the one where you were saying, like, if this isn't real, just jump off the cliff. You were, like, literally telling him to just do it. I told him that believing in simulation theory is scary. Um, you have to believe that this is real. 
Because if this is not real, then there's no point of living. The dangers of simulation theory, that's what I'm referring to. I don't even think he had any coherent point to make there, though. Because I remember watching bits of the whole... He was in... He was not okay. But I mean, well, like, we went back to the Etika thing because it was like... It's the same thing with what you said with Ethan. It's like, I hope you change. I hope that you can be, like, a good ally to the trans community. But there are so many things people will never forgive you for. And it's going to be a lot of work. I feel like I feel like I've come on here and it's like, you know, Keem, you did this and you did that and you did that. And we've been talking about like to be you know, fair, all, like I brought you on to talk about trans issues and like for the last two hours you mostly just recounted your life to me. Well, in reference to your questions, right? Yeah. In reference to you asking questions, right? Not all of it. Not all of it. I mean, like, you I was specifically said, interested in why you made this turn, but man, I, because, like, you brought up the Etika stuff. I felt like I didn't know enough about it. I didn't want to bring it up. Well, I was talking about, um, you know, a lot of stuff that's, uh, you know, constantly being thrown at me over and over again and not represented the correct way and the correct context. There's a thing that gets thrown at you all the time that you stole your viewers' money, you raised a bunch of money, and then, um, act it like you uh, need to be hiding and hiding, then showed up at um, TwitchCon and whatnot, and that you took advantage of your audience um, for the swatting and stole like $100,000 and whatnot. It's not true, but like, even if that was true, that's a fucking drop in the bucket compared to the I killed a kid accusation. Well, I feel like you're trying to butter me up. <laughs> like, you know butter what I mean? You up. No, like, you're just. Are you trying to butter me up with that? Butter I you up with what? I didn't kill Attica. I didn't kill Attica. Um, what I did do is not recognize that he was in a mental health crisis, along with a lot of people online. Um, when I did that interview, six weeks went by, um, and during that time, there were no videos that Keemstar is taking advantage of, you know, um, someone through a mental health crisis. They're, like these videos didn't exist. These people coming out saying that I took advantage of Etika um, didn't exist because the internet um, content creators, viewers, mm -hmm. his own fans, um, many of them did not believe that he was going through a mental health crisis. They thought that he was doing this for attention and clout. And they re referred to him as a clown. He was getting called a clown nonstop by these people. Yeah. It's only after the fact that this horrible tragedy took place. Were you participating in that hate mob? Like, I wasn't I, there. I'm not, this isn't like, I'm not. I was so convinced that he was doing this stuff for clout because that's what he told me. Um, that, you know, when he went missing, there was a time frame in which uh, Attica went missing. Um, where... You know, he made the suicide video um, that I didn't believe it to be true. I even issued, I even put out a tweet saying something like, come on, dude, everyone's worried about you. Um, I forgot what I said. Stop playing around, like come back online or something along those lines. Because I didn't, I, I didn't believe that he was going through a mental health crisis at all. I thought he was doing this for clout, for attention, to trend, you know? Man. I mean, it. No, uh, somebody yeah. said cute revision of history. No, the revision of history has been from these people saying I killed Attica. And that's the truth. How do you, after, like, how do you go on after that? I don't get it. I don't under. For like, the that's third fucking time, heavy. For the third time, his, his mother reached out to me with a lovely. Um, text message. Um, his girlfriend reached out no, to me. No, like, actually, I mean, like, not the rehearsed, like, what you've been saying for years about the situation. Like, how it's do you... Rehearsed. It's the truth. It's the truth. 
it feels like it's like the type of thing you've been asked enough times that you've just kind of polished in your head. Like this is the only time I can remember being asked about this situation. I, I don't think I've ever been on a show where someone's asked me about this. You brought it up in the first place, brother. I didn't do this. Okay, but what I'm saying is that you said you accused me of rehearsing these lines, all right? And every time I'm asked about it, like I give the same script. No, I don't think anyone's asked me about this when I appeared on their stream or podcast or anything. I can't remember a time. No fucking way. There's no way that no one has ever asked you like these kinds of questions before. And I feel like I'm not even like asking very many pointed questions. Yeah, I, show, I show up on podcasts all the time. I go, I go on people's podcasts. I talk about anything. All right. Right. Uh, I, don't, I don't think people um, have asked me that. Most of the, most uh, people uh, recognize that I'm not to blame. Um, the problem is, is the people that are talking about it, um, are, are the ones that are, are saying that I am to blame. But when you ask most people, uh, in reference to this scenario and they were to give their take, I think most people don't think I'm to blame at all. It's like my enemies bring it up. Ethan Klein brings it up. Ethan Klein has said multiple times that I told Etika to jump off a bridge. Um, you did actually like you no. said this. No, I did not. Just a simulation. No, I did Who not. cares? What I we'll said bird box. is why not just jump off a cliff? Uh, no, I haven't so watched that movie. So how it gets changed the bridge I is because Attica actually did jump off a bridge. You know what happens in the movie Bird Box? And this is what I'm talking box? about, the bad well, faith it. actors um, out here. Why not? Why do you fear death? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's scary because if you really think about it, then why live? Just yeah. jump off a Hello? cliff. If, still if there? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm still here. You told him, I mean, you told him to, you told him to jump. No, like, I guess I the didn't. reason that you did, you literally is, said, if this isn't, you said it to him, you know, if you legitimately said, no. did not understand, like he was having a mental health crisis and in this moment, well, he's like going off on this fucking episode where he can't even tell what's fucking real. And you decided to like argue with that and be like okay well why don't you just fucking jump off a cliff which is literally verbatim the words you said in that situation that's yeah, fucking you're, tragic you're cutting the sentence i said simulation i said something along this right no I but don't have the clip. no no i had the clip you said like you it was obviously in the context of simulation well, sim simulation theory is scary it is but scary. it's like he wasn't but talking believe none of this is real right then, then there's no point of life. We're like, why not just jump off a cliff? There's no point. If right, but he wasn't. He wasn't saying that because he was well versed in whatever simulation theory was. He was saying that because he was having a mental health crisis. Like that's just depersonalization, you know. He like he legitimately was like, I don't fucking know what's real and what isn't real. I mean. It's nice to have uh, that insight after the fact, you know? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I did not believe that he was mentally ill at all. But he was. I, I, I don't even, yeah, I, I don't even know what the fuck, what you would even say to that. Like, I don't believe you that you didn't know he was mentally ill. Like, I think that in this situation you knew and you thought it would be really funny content and you admitted earlier in this stream, you thought it was really funny to egg on someone who was mentally ill. Again, when I talked to Etika, Etika right? was like, I'm trending. I'm trending. I'm popping off. Right, because he's fucking idea. manic. He everything's up. Right. It's like, but my from my perspective, all right. This man was on live stream. Somebody swatted him. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, he streamed the entire thing. He's the number one story right now. Um, I'm not seeing a mental health crisis. I'm seeing somebody swat him. 
you understand what I'm saying? I talked to Attica and Attica's like, I'm popping off right now. I'm this, I'm that. Um, you know, and at the time, at the time that this took place, um, many years ago, I had no concept of, uh, like mental, um, health issues and whatnot, like no yeah. understanding whatsoever. Right. I so, am a little confused though. Like, cause you just like, um, you associated him getting swatted with him popping off and doing well, but getting swatted is actually really fucking traumatic. He associated that. And he was taken to another reason why I didn't think it was a mental health crisis is because he was taken to a hospital. All right. And he was released like an hour later. Right. Right. So it's like, if the prof I'm not a doctor, like I'm not a professional in this field. I and at that time I literally knew nothing about mental health crises. So for my position, right. And my understanding at that time was like, well, he's fine. He's obviously fine. If there was something wrong with him, they would have kept him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you? No, are I you, understand. You, I understand what you're saying. But are you trying to let me ask you a question, yeah. Kevils? Are you trying to understand my point of view, or is it just I'm you're wrong, you're evil? You're wrong, you're evil. You no. did this horrible thing. No, because I knew these things. That, I knew these things about you before I did this stream. But I believe that people should be heard out. People have the ability to change. And if you don't give people space to change, they'll never fucking change. Well, What's the point? Well, I did, I did change in mental health issues after that um because i didn't know shit um and i now more recognize it and th that was one aspect of it um that really helped me uh have some better understanding of it um the etika thing but also i did a documentary on fuzzy tube mm -hmm. who was another content creator that was um and he's my dear friend now but at the time we were kind of enemies he was going to try to run an event in five days with five days notice, like a big, awesome, it was called July 15th. Actually, no. Now that I think about it, the Fousey tube situation happened before Etika. But this was a, another part of my understanding. Um, so Fousey tube mm. basically was going to run an event in five days and it was going to be like this big Coachella type thing. Um, and I was going to be in LA at the time where he was running this event. So I did a documentary on him and, um, it was so unclear on what was going on with Fousey. And then after the documentary, it became very clear that, um, you know, he was, he was manic and having, um, somewhat of a mental health crisis. And, Fast forward years later, me and Fousey ended up um, becoming close friends. We actually launched a, a business together called mm -hmm. Happy Punch. I actually don't know anything about... I think this is actually those, my first time hearing about Fousey. Those two scenarios um, really opened my eyes to, I guess, these mental health stuff that I just fucking didn't know anything about. You know? If I... I mean, a lot of that stuff from the surface, are, without me understanding anything about mental health and manic and any of that stuff, just looked like a content creator trying to get attention. Yeah. I mean, I think there's an entire problem with the industry where really fucked up things happen to people. And the result is that people, people think, okay, how can I monetize this? How can I make this into content? I think what happened with Amaranth really exemplifies that point, you know? she had the situation with her abusive husband where she opened up about how it's like he was threatening to kill her dog he had all of the passwords to her bank account and to her social media accounts and the biggest takeaway from so many people was oh she lied about being single but she's an entertainer it's all personas yeah i think i had that take too i was like well she did lie <laughs> i got fucking beat up by the internet for that one yeah, it just like it feels like there's just there should be more rules 
at least unspoken rules about what can and can't be content because it's just going to drive people into really fucked up situations where it's like you have a big platform you're in front of hundreds thousands sometimes millions of people for a living you have a mental health crisis and then it's just like you're not going to be very in control of what you do and based on how you react you could end up getting yourself into a situation where people manipulate you or egg you on or and this isn't just even trying to recount shit i just mean that i think in general it's, it's not, fucked it's not the full story it's not the full story about you know you know there's so many incidences all right where content creators have been suicidal and i'm the one on the phone uh i'm the one on the phone trying to help them um and that stuff's not public because why would it be public you know mm. um and it's like it's just it's not the full story the internet is like you did this you did that you did this you did nothing is ever in fucking context all right nothing is um ever uh truly based on reality um yeah I yeah mean, i mean yeah of course like everyone wants the most sensationalized version of events I don't disagree with you on that. I saw that no, with like, myself pretty fast. You want to hear the strangest thing? Brianna Wu just liked my tweet. <laughs> I <laughs> Saying think... that Jeremy is in his safe space being in his basement. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I, had, I talked. I like Brianna. I talked to her for a bit. All I know about her is that she was like the main person in the Gamergate scenario. Yeah, uh, she saw a lot of similarities between what she went through and what I went through, except like I'm not even that much of a gamer. I say this while I've been playing a game for two and a half hours. But True. she's she's really cool. I don't know her other than I remember the Gamergate uh, situation and gamers were pissed off that they wanted games to be promoted fairly and rated fairly. And there was a story that allegedly a game developer uh, traded sexual favors for a good review on a game. And so they were mad about that. And then I remember the you're online... talking about uh, Zoe Quinn and Nathan Grayson. But from what I understand, that's not exactly what went down. Right. But that's what allegedly took place, right? After her actual boyfriend leaked that they were having an affair or something. I don't know. Anyhow, the gamers online were mad and they wanted um, games to be reviewed fairly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then the mainstream media spun Gamergate into, this is about attacking women. And it was like this two narratives of the online community and the mainstream media were just describing Gamergate in two wildly different fucking ways. Yeah, I mean, it was a harassment campaign against three different women. That was definitely, whether or not you, like people can argue if it was about ethics and gaming journalism or not, the end result of it was similar to what happened to me, except it looked like it was even fucking worse. Like lots of rape threats, lots of death threats, people having to relocate houses, people needing to hire private security because of stalkers. It was a fucking nightmare to go through. Well, I've talked about how, you know, I'm labeled with a bunch of stuff that isn't factually accurate, right? What are you labeled with that the internet is constantly accusing you of and, or whatnot that just is not true? Um, or is being taken out of context or is being manipulated in some way? Oh yeah, like I always, I constantly get like, um, constantly get called like a groomer pedophile, but that's, it's seemingly, the problem is, it's like, it's so, it's so obviously about me being trans and me supporting trans people who are minors, because I was one, you know, it's not a situation I'll ever back down from. I remember um, there being something online or on Twitter that I saw where they were accusing you of giving like running some type of black market uh thing to make sure trans kids can get um 
Oh, you're talking about the therapy. DIY HRT directory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I sponsored that site. It was a way for people to get uh, hormones over the internet without a doctor prescription. And I sponsored it because a lot of uh, states were making it illegal if you were under the age of 18, despite like every medical organization from local to international saying that that's okay to do. Do you understand how like people would be very upset with that? I do, but I also don't give a shit. I think that's the thing, but you get if that. You, if you have kids, right? Your, your kids are legally yours until they're like 18 or something. Right. So, uh, Shouldn't parents be making that decision? That's um, the argument. Okay, I think... So, do you think it'd be okay? Like, let's say there's a kid. He's on life support. His parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. They do not believe that you should be allowed to be on life support. And because that kid is under the age of 18, the parents decide, okay, we're pulling the plug. This kid could make a full recovery live have an entire life ahead of them but because of their parents belief this kid is gonna fucking die like is that okay i mean i'm pro-choice and i think that's okay you wait how, how does that relate well i mean i feel like if a woman a woman wants to you know kill their unborn child I'm not talking um, about like an, an unborn child. I'm talking let's like a fucking six year old, an eight year old, a twelve year old. Well, I'm comparing the two things. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I'm pro choice in that aspect. I think that's a very fucking sad scenario that you're presenting. Um And these are scenarios but, that just happen a lot, you know? Look, I mean, there's there's situations where parents um are you know, abusive or whatever, neglect their child and they get taken from the state for the betterment of the kid, right? Um, do you think if a trans person, a, a trans child um, is being denied hormone therapy, should they be taken from the state so they can get the hormone therapy? I feel like that's really contextual. Like I'd need to know more about the parents. Like why are the parents denying them this? Um, how many doctors have been involved? Like. There's just too much information for it to be a simple yes or no. These are very, very complicated issues. Yeah, like I know I met someone, you know, um, and she came out as trans when she was like, I think, eight years old in the 70s. And the response by her parents was to put her through conversion therapy, right? She went through conversion therapy. Uh, she got abused. And she went back into the closet. She didn't come out again until she was in her 40s. And it's just like, these are the kinds of situations that happen a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I know people are going to be mad at me for that no matter what, but it's something I believe in. And I honestly, I think what some people don't get is that I view it as a stopgap solution. Like you should be seeing a doctor, you should be able to access proper healthcare, but in a lot of places you can't. Like I know people who uh, accessed hormones through that website where it's a parent buying it for their kid who has already been on hormones and who has already uh, been diagnosed and gone through the whole route. But the state has decided that despite um, what like the inter the I forgot like the international transgender health organization or whatever says is acceptable. The Republicans in the state are like, no, you have to be eighteen. So the choice is either um, let your kid go through like the puberty they were naturally going to go through, and you know that could lead to a whole bunch of stuff, um, a whole bunch of mental health issues, suicide attempts, and shit like that, or you could keep supporting your kid. It's a fucked up situation that shouldn't happen, but I'm glad it's there as a last resort option. Forgive me, I have to pee. Okay. Um, so I didn't expect, uh, I didn't expect this situation to go the way it did. How's everyone doing? I don't think I've been doing a great job building my raft in the past little bit.
I think this is going to break apart. Anyway. Just tuned in for stream. Hello, everyone. I'm, uh, Sorry, I'm I'm just I'm still just like shocked the situation here. Wait a second. I am back. Hello. I was thinking about um, while I was taking a pee that um, you said something about like, oh, there's I forgot exactly what you said, but you said, well, there's all these things and I'm I'm glad that you support trans issues, but there's these other things. And do you think that I'm trying to um, trying to be a good guy or something trying to be seen as like, uh, you know, I, I don't have a better word. I honestly good couldn't tell because I'm it's, not because it's in. <laughs> What? I'm not. I don't like being seen as a good guy. I, I like, already know you're me. not a good guy, Keem. That goes against <laughs> everything that Keemstar is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no. Um it was that was good talking about that though. It's it's like every time like people talk about the DIY hormone thing. It sounds incredibly fucking alarming, and then you actually hear why I sponsored the thing, and people are like, oh, okay, I get, I understand the perspective now. I'm a parent, and um, if my kid wanted to uh, start like a hormone therapy or something like that, um, yeah. I just, I would be against it. I would, you know? Um, and again, I don't know a lot on the situation. I don't know a lot about trans issues, right? I'm definitely not the expert, right? Right. But I can just say as a, a parent, I, I want to protect my kid. Like it's instilled um, in my DNA. Like I want the best for my kid. I want to protect my kid. Um, I mean, if you want to do the best for them, you should take that kind of thing seriously. Like, at least get them to see a therapist. Well, do you know how foreign that is to someone that, you know, um, doesn't know that many trans people, doesn't really understand? Do you understand how foreign it is um, to me and not really understanding that? You know, being cis myself, not, not having the firsthand um, experience of, you know, wanting to be a different gender than, than I was biologically. I you mean, understand how hard it is for parents. Oh, yeah, to... yeah, absolutely. I had to, you know, I had to come out when I was like 16 to my mom and my dad and like go through this entire thing. And it's really fucking hard. It took a really long time. Like, yeah. yeah. To to the entire chat um, that's saying I he he's not an ally. I can't believe he's calling himself an ally. I have not called myself an ally. All right, I just put out some tweets and then y'all memed that I'm an ally, <laughs> right? I, I don't think that I'm against the trans community in, um, in any sense. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I am. I don't have any hatred towards trans people. Uh, I don't oppose someone um, becoming trans. True. Um, um, if I do, like, if you don't support it, though, if I find out uh, who your kid is and they come out as trans and this is a public thing, I'm going to make sure they go on hormones, Keem. I'm yeah, going well, to be their daddy. As a, as a parent, that's where I'd be like, no. No, that's my kid. No, you know? Yeah. So you do recognize why people get so angry about that because we're, we're dealing with kids. Of course. I totally get it. I just don't think that you can own a child. Like maybe well, that's we, maybe that's I mean, what the law says, but that's yeah. that's fucked up. Like they should have autonomy. 
because otherwise you're going to get into these situations where parents just have free reign to fuck their kids up and abuse them as much as they want. Like corporal punishment, that's still legal in a lot of states. Is it right? Hell no. Okay, let's say a kid's 13 years old. Yeah. And they decide that they don't want to live with mom and dad anymore, right? Uh, can they go move out and go live with someone else if they want to? Um, if they're 13 years old, can they move out? And what what's the situation? I just feel like it's like too... Okay. Let me... I, well, I, I made a general, um, you know, scenario because it's... I'm just trying to get to a simple point. A 13-year-old yeah. can cannot say, look, I don't like living here anymore. I'm living with my friend's parents. They can't make that decision. Only a parent can, a guardian can. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, the point that I'm trying to make is that parents are like the legal owner of that child until they're 18 years old. It's, but it's like the situation, right? It's like, because I, you never actually answered me about the situation with like the Jehovah's Witnesses parents. Like, should they have free reign to kill a child simply because of their religious belief? If this child could get better. Or like in another situation, like let's say there's a child incredibly mentally fucked up, like desperate need of mental health uh, intervention. Parents are Scientologists. Legally a religion in the US. You could make the religious freedom uh, argument to say that th they can keep their kid from seeing a psychiatrist. I mean, you would say that that's fucked up. I would say that that's fucked up. But the real question is, is like, what do you do in that scenario? What do you do? Does the state have to intervene? You know, like it's just these are these are tricky, yeah, tricky scenarios. When I was younger, there was a big story, um, very very popular story in the early two thousands or maybe late nineties, of this woman who um, was basically on life support, and I think it was down in the state of Florida. Maybe somebody in the chat knows the story. A very popular story. Um, and her husband moved on. She, I think she was in a car accident or something. Her husband moved on, remarried, all this stuff. And the family wanted to keep her on life support. But the husband decided to pull the... Yeah, they're, see, they're saying it right in the chat. Um, the mm -hmm. husband wanted to pull the plug. Right. And... In that scenario, now I forgot why I brought up this. Um, but yeah, uh, the husband ended up making the decision to pull the plug on this woman that was on life support for like a decade or something. And it was a very triggering scenario for the entire country. Mm -hmm. That's a hard one. Because it's like, if he has the ability, like... If, he, if he's conscious and he can make that decision, he should be able to make it for himself. But if he's not, I, I don't think so. So going back to you, the Jehovah Witness kid um, who's on life support and the parents want to pull the plug, um, you're obviously against that, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm against it as well. But it's like, what do you do? What do you do in that scenario? Like, what right. is the law? Like, what is, you know... There's so many issues like that, especially in the trans community, where it's just really, really, really tricky. Right. I might I have Yeah, my biggest worry though is just people are going to bring their bias into it, you know? It's hard to avoid um anti trans rhetoric and all of the shit that gets thrown out, all of the misinformation. So many huge social media accounts just constantly highlighting anyone who's like a little bit cringe or embarrassing to try and make it just seem like a humiliating thing to be trans entirely. Like you don't want to know anyone who's trans or be associated with anyone who's trans. And it's, it's fucked. Yeah. Uh, I DM'd you, um, Miles Chong. I got to head out. Um, you do? I did have a qu one last question though that I had like, did you change your position on like mental health medications? The reason I was asking three is because beer, three sips of beer, yeah. another manipulation of something I've said. Okay. Like okay. You said the drug companies invent all these illnesses so they could sell drugs to morons. Social anxiety is a fake illness. 
so they can sell you drugs and make millions. Stop being weak. Society is literally going to die if you keep this bullshit up. You tweeted this in April and Etika died in June of the same year. And those tweets are deleted tweets. That's why I have screenshots because, um, again, uh, I just didn't understand shit about mental health. I still don't know much, um, but I know much more now. I DM'd you uh, Miles Chong swatting Andy Worski, um, him admitting to a girl. So if you're interested in that. Thank you. Uh, anything else before I go? I got nothing. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, I guess I'll continue being the ally icon. <laughs> <laughs> And fuck the quartering. He's an SJW. Oh, yeah. Right. He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. And we agree on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thanks for having me on. Okay. All right. Uh, that was that was a ride. That. Did I. I... I'm sorry. I'm just like. What did we learn from this? I, I don't know what I learned from this. Absolutely no idea what was learned from this situation, to be honest. How the hell were you so patient? Because I didn't want to start off aggressive, because if I did, the conversation would end before I could get into actually asking questions. Do I consider him an ally? No, I don't. I don't cons I don't consider him an ally. I I thought it was really funny. <sighs> I th I honestly think like even if he like completely turns around, even if he's the best trans ally ever, he has to be accountable for all of the fucked up things he has done. He can't just do one thing. But also, he wasn't... I know he's still watching. Hi, Keem. Keem. Go, 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 go eat some, like, pussy of someone who is, like, 18 years younger than you. I don't know. It, you do that. I got... I gotta do some other stuff. Hi, thank you so much for watching. If you want to participate in the chat and the videos while they're live, you can do so by making an account at keppels.gg. Also, my videos on this channel regularly get demonetized, so if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com keppels, and I appreciate all of your ongoing support. I'll see you on the next video.